Hi, I'm David Bush. Welcome back to Bush History. I'm continuing my presentation called The Presidents, an ongoing look at the administration of each of the presidents in, Amer in American history. Right now, we're up to James Buchanan. He's the 15th president of the United States. All kinds of additional information is available on my website at bushhistory.net. Either way, in either case, let's take a look at James Buchanan. James Buchanan, 15th president of the United States, his vice president was John Breckinridge, who will end up running in the 1860 election. Political party, Democrat, term of office, 1857 to 1861, another one-term president. Remember, a decade or a time period filled with one-term presidents does not allow for any continuity of policy. And sure enough, the 1850s is called the decade of crisis because we just can't seem to figure it out, and it's certainly going to end in war. Who came before him and after him, and what were their political parties? Franklin Pierce was a Democrat who came before him, and Abraham Lincoln was a Republican who follows him. Any unusual circumstances surrounding his ascent to the presidency? Well, the, con the controversy over the Kansas-Nebraska Act had pretty much doomed the Franklin Pierce presidency. Remember, he said he was only going to run for one term of office. He was not going to run for a second term. So the divided nation turns around and they choose Buchanan with about 45 percent of the popular vote. So he was called a minority president. Highly debated at the time was the Dred Scott case. And James Buchanan did something certainly shady, and I don't know if it was illegal. He approaches Roger Taney, who was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court at the time, and asks Roger Taney not to announce the Dred Scott decision until after he becomes president. He does not want it to be an election issue, which of course is tampering with the Supreme Court, and you're not supposed to do that kind of thing. The electors, James Buchanan had 174, and John Fremont had 114. The office, are there any catchphrases? He was called the bachelor president because he was not married. Some people thought he might have uh, tendencies towards being gay, and um, for that reason, he was called an Aunt Nancy. It was whispered he had had some kind of relationship, possibly, with Rufus King. Now, none of this was ever proven, and it really didn't matter. But that's where the people who derided him were going with their comments. When he left office, was it by choice, defeat, natural death, assassination, or resignation? Well, he was a one-term president. He had committed to being a one-term president from the beginning. So he was going to check out a dodge before things really got crazy. Domestic issues and events. In 1857, we have the Dred Scott case, which I mentioned a few minutes ago. The whole idea of, is a slave who travels into free territory free, even if he's brought back into slave territory? And of course, the Taney decision that said that Dred Scott could not bring suit because he was not a citizen of the United States, so he kind of sidestepped whether Dred Scott should be free or not. The Lecompton Constitution, which was a constitution, a pro-slavery constitution in Kansas that James Buchanan endorsed without the approval of the Senate, very bad idea. In 1858, we have the Lincoln-Douglas debates between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas. And it's really, it's nothing to do with the presidency. It's debates about slavery, seven debates about slavery in Illinois. But we get to find out the two men's opinion on slavery. We get to find out that Lincoln believes that the United States cannot be half free and half slave, his house divided speech. And he wants to contain slavery. He's not an abolitionist. And then we have Stephen Douglas, who's all for popular sovereignty, which sounds very democratic, but it simply means people are going to kill each other until the vote actually occurs. In 1859, we have John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry, in which he wants to arm slaves and cause a slave revolt. And who is he caught by? He's caught by Robert E. Lee. In 1860, we have the four-way presidential election, in which no candidate has a majority of the popular vote, and Lincoln turns around, and he's going to get a small, a small majority of the electoral vote once everything is worked out. And as a result of that, he is going to be the 16th president of the United States. And right after Lincoln is elected in December, December 20th, the South Carolina secedes and begins the march to Civil War. In 1861, James Buchanan basically watched as the South seceded. James Buchanan did not think secession was legal, but he also didn't believe that he, as the president, had the power to stop it. And I don't know if he was content to leave Abraham Lincoln, but Abraham Lincoln was going to have to figure this one out. His presidency was dominated by internal issues, so for the most part, for the most part, there was not a lot going on internationally with James Buchanan. Anyway, for now, 
I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History. Have a great day.